So we've gotten a lot more subscribers here in the last few months. Um, I just wanted to in reintroduce myself. Hi, my name is SK Pac-Man. You can call me Pac-Man, Steve, whatever. Yes, my real first name is Steve. You can call me whatever you're comfortable with. Also, it is my birthday today. So there's that. <laughs> While I'm introducing myself, here's a little bit about me. Uh, I'm, I'm a lifelong gamer. I've been gaming since I was two, three, four years old. Some of my first memories are of playing like Super Mario Brothers on the NES with my dad 30 plus years ago. And I, I never lost that. I never lost that passion, that wonder, that love of gaming. So that's most of the reason why I made this channel is I love gaming and I want to share that with people, you know, anybody. I am married to my high school sweetheart. We've been married to almost 20 years now. Uh, I'm a dad of three. My oldest is autistic. Uh, they're also a teenager, so there's all those problems with that. Uh, my youngest is disabled. She's an amazing ball of energy. I wouldn't trade any of my kids for the world. My middle child is literally a carbon copy of me, so I get to deal with the problems I had as a kid, but from the other perspective, sorry, Dad. <laughs> but I am an engineer. I went to college for engineering. My day job is engineering. I've been doing YouTube on and off for eight years now. What I mainly like to do here on YouTube is stuff that brings out my personality. So while, yes, playing games, but also video essays and vlogs like this. The main types of games that I play are puzzles, puzzle platformers, anything that gets my brain going where I can use my engineering knowledge and really pushes the envelope of how I have to solve a problem in a game. So any game that there's a problem solving thing, I treat as a puzzle. That, but that's what I went to school for. That's how my brain works is reverse engineering, forward engineering, whatever. But this whole YouTube online content creator thing has been a problem to solve for eight years now. And what I mean by a problem is, it's a long story, I'm going to try and make it as short as I can. Uh, I started out on YouTube in about 2016, I forget exactly what video it is that sparked my interest, but in 2016 I was looking up gameplay videos of a specific game that I was interested in buying, and then scrolling through I saw a whole bunch of really boring crap, like just no commentary, no microphone, no webcam gaming videos, people fumbling through the game. And I came across this video of this guy. He had really good comedic timing. He was really funny. He had this energy about him, the way he carried himself, the way he mixed both deadpan and dry comedy with super energetic and f fun sound effects. But it was just him. He didn't add sound effects to the videos. It's uh, like sarcastic comedy, and that's that's the stuff. That's that's the stuff, kind of stuff that I live for. I fucking love that. Um, that creator was Bob. If, if you don't if you don't know Bob, you're what the hell are you? What rock are you under? I found Bob first out of his whole friend group, which a lot of people find insane. Long story short, I eventually did buy the game that I saw him playing. I don't remember what the game was, but I know I bought it. But the more I dove into his videos, the more I dove into the Let's Play genre of YouTube. And I had no idea it, that type of thing existed before finding Bob. I, I, I didn't know Let's Plays were a thing. I didn't know you could play games and build a community and get paid for it. Like that, that was totally insane to me. So I continued getting deeper into Bob's community and made a whole bunch of friends there and they encouraged me to start making content. So that's where I started making YouTube videos with just a few of my friends. They were terrible, awful, horrifyingly bad videos. I don't recommend anybody go back and watch them, but if you want to, sure. It was then that that passion was sparked. Bob was that spark. But I feel like over the last three, four months after diving back into YouTube, quitting Twitch, I made a video about quitting Twitch and diving back into YouTube and really soaking myself in how YouTube works. I think I've improved over the last three, four months and I've gotten really serious into how YouTube works, how to make good videos, editing techniques, editing software. But in the beginning, while I was 
just making videos and starting to attract attention. And the channel was growing, and I had a lot about a good amount of friends that were starting. Um, those friends were encouraging me to start streaming on Twitch as well. So I had to make a choice: do I continue stream, continue making videos? Do I make videos and stream on Twitch? Do I make videos out of my Twitch streams? It was a whole lot of work that I had to figure out. At the time, I only had one kid, and it wasn't really that hard to do. Now I have three kids, and I have to balance everything. It's gotten quite a bit more complicated. Uh, but I had, to, I had to make a choice then. Do I do Twitch, or do I do YouTube? I had to drop one to do the other, because it was taking up way too much of my time. So I brought my YouTube community over to Twitch, it was a great time. The The initial growth was amazing. That something happened in my community, I'm not going to get into what happened, but what happened continued to affect my channel years down the line, and my community pretty much just split in half. And both halves didn't want to intermingle with each other, so they both just avoided my channel. And that's that was the beginning of the death of my channel. And I truly believed I could revive that channel. I really did. I spent so much time redoing my platform, redoing everything. Uh, hopping platforms, I went to Mixer, Trovo, DLive. I went to every streaming platform there was. And then I came back to Twitch and it was all just the same. So after beating that dead horse for six years, I decided a few months ago that, all right, I've had it. I've had a taste of what success looks like on Twitch. It was ripped away from me. It's time to step back, take some time off, really evaluate what I wanted. And then I started really pushing on YouTube, making videos that I could actually be proud of, making connections with game developers that I really appreciate. And that early failure it's something that I look back on and go, I'm not doing that again. We're, we're going to move forward and we're going to make the best content that I can using all the knowledge that I've accrued over the last several months and just continue to get better. But for Twitch, it, it was it was forcing myself into something that I, I didn't realize that I no longer wanted to do. And my mental health struggled real bad over the last two years. It started several years before that. And the reason my mental health was struggling so bad then is I was tying my my internal happiness, my, my outlook on the world, on my viewership numbers, my analytics, my total watch time, all that stuff. I had tied my happiness that is mine to something outside of me. When you tie your happiness to something external to yourself, any change in that will drag you down immeasurably. You have to look inside of yourself to understand that you deserve happiness because you exist and simply because you exist. One thing that I'm working on, I mean, I don't have a therapist right now. I can't afford one. One thing I'm working on is finding something within myself, and I know you can do this too. Find something within myself that I can be happy about, that I can tie my happiness to. I've gotten better about not giving a crap about viewership, viewership numbers. I do give a crap about you. you you're important to me. <laughs> I do care that you're here, and you're worth more than you think you are. But tying my happiness to outside things like my numbers and my viewership and all that stuff was legitimately killing me. Uh, my depression was incredibly bad and I was ready to give up online, give up being online completely, just delete all my channels, all my socials, everything, and just be a consumer, play games for myself. I put way too much effort into this channel for too long to just watch it fail. I'm kind of weary of doing that here. So I'm pacing myself, I'm learning, picking up editing techniques, learning improv, working on my speech, uh, trying to make it work. And it's not like I have any help. <laughs> I don't have any editors. Uh, I have a few moderators, but that's about it. 
Uh, the most support that I get for doing any of this is you guys, my community, my, the people in my Discord, my closest friends, and anytime I bring up YouTube anything with my family, nobody in my household gives a shit. Like the last time I brought up this hobby with my mother-in-law and my wife's mom, uh, the only thing she was concerned about is if it's making money. Like, do your hobbies make you money? <laughs> It's a hobby. That's not the point. The point is to... to learn to be better than I was yesterday. To... to do this because I want to. Not because I'm getting paid to. I would love to make this my full-time job. But that's entirely up to you guys. That's... that's not for me to decide. I feel like I've found a niche. Puzzle games is kind of like the overarching theme here. I have had some some success with Bendy and the Ink Machine, and I have an Easter egg that's wandering as a terrible sin or sinny. I don't really like that. I don't really like that name, but you know, it is what it is. I feel like a lot of people come to my channel expecting to see nothing but Bendy stuff, but I have so much more. So so much more. I've done about. 600 videos, 80 or so of which are shorts. Uh, I'm starting to work on video essays, and I what I don't want to do is make a whole bunch of channels for different stuff. So everything that I make is going to end up on this channel. Like, I know Ludwig and, and all of these bigger creators have a bunch of channels that have separate niches for things. Uh, I want to make this channel about me, the stuff that I like, the th videos that I produce the games that I play the topics that I want to talk about but but I, I have considered making other YouTube channels but like the cheaters never prosper video that video essay I made a few weeks ago uh, I worked on that for a really long time and I it's still gaming themed it's still a gaming history themed it's stuff that I'm passionate about so why not put it on my channel I want to put my name on it it belongs here you know and I feel like this channel is exactly that. It's this this channel is what you see on camera, what you see in these videos, is me. It's how I am in real life. I don't put on a show. I don't turn my personality up to 110. Uh, percent I don't really have a unique voice. I don't have a unique job. I don't have a unique life really. Just kind of a regular boring dad. And I think. I think that's part of why I'm unique. It's part of what makes me me. I have a passion for gaming, but I'm just a regular dad. Really, anything. I'm the most unremarkable person learning to be more remarkable. But w one one thing that does set me apart, and you can quote me on this one, is uh, I, I crave authenticity. These big personalities, the overreactions, the channels that are specifically for digging up drama you have moist critical xqc ludwig and all these creators that are forced into making drama videos they have these younger guys that are ex edgy toxic crap i find all that stuff bogus just annoying i'm just here to be an average dad who loves puzzle games and gaming history gaming history is something that i love to dig into and research this is the entire industry that was built on people learning and trying new things, and I'm not so much into the drama and stuff that happens in it. You know, layoffs and company acquisitions, all that stuff. The, the, the overworking of, you, of your employees. You're not going to hear any of that from me. I mean, I'm here to promote cool games, play cool shit, and be a dad. That's... <laughs> what I'm here for and like indie devs and indie games are something I will continue playing like Thor fucking love that guy but the the major influence I have on me making videos is people like Bob specifically Bob and Thor Mark Wade Jacksepticeye all the cool people <laughs> So if you're into any of those kinds of topics, if you're into authenticity, if you're into a, a dad gamer, that's what I'm here for. That's what, what my overall target is. If you're watching this 
and you're tired of people overreacting and being loud just for the sake of being loud, I'm not that. I'm the chill dad. I'm just here to make videos. Oh, that said, basically I'm just making this video to say thank you for subscribing and showing me that I'm on the right path. Watching my videos makes me understand what you guys want out of me so that I can produce better videos. Yes, there will be more bendy content in the future. There's going to be more puzzle games, talking heads. And where I want to go with all of this is eventually I want to quit my job and do YouTube full time. So thank you for subscribing. If you're new here, why not subscribe? If you're not already, just hit the button. You see what else I have cooking up. And I'll see you guys next time.